Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. The PlayStation 5 Pro is going to be an absolute beastly machine, according to some rumours that are floating around online, capable of 4K gameplay at 120 frames a second. Now, how the hell can it achieve this? Well, obviously, it has advanced jiggery pokery in terms of better specifications like improvements to the GPU and CPU and so on, which we'll talk about more in a moment. But one of the key ways that it improves upon its predecessor, or should I say the base machine, is with advanced um, AI and machine learning capabilities, which will, of course, help to upscale an image from a lower resolution, but potentially even um, do frame generation. Now, these rumors that have resurfaced are from NXG or Michael. Now, Michael um, or NXG has his own YouTube channel, which is really cool. He does some really good technical analysis, a lot of console games, for example. And he also sometimes uh, puts out videos on IGN as well. Um, but in this particular instance, he was on Moore's Law is Dead podcast, and he was apparently spouting some information that he's been hearing from developers. Now, what I'll say to you guys is that I am pretty damn certain that NXG is right. His rumors, his information match up really well with what I've mentioned on the channel several times at this point, and I do believe that this is correct. In fact, with the Insomniac leak, uh, specifically the Wolverine slides that I've mentioned on the channel a few times, they were also talking about machine learning and advanced upscaling. Now, you can, of course, have um, upscaling technologies in the base PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series consoles. They have a lot of different support with Sony's older proprietary technologies. You've got FSR2, you've got um, Unreal Engines, and so on and so on. But this seems to be something different. This seems to be a new technology exclusive to the PS5 Pro. Now, if you go back in history, if you jump with me in my DeLorean, okay, now we've traveled at the requisite 88 miles an hour back in time, you may recall that the um, PS4 Pro had some upscaling technology as well. Now, it's not in the same vein, of course. It doesn't have machine learning or any of that but it instead had uh, checkerboard rendering. Now that, of course, is not the same thing as, let's say, FSR2, but it was a new technology that was essentially uh, bolstered by some of the technical improvements of the PS4 Pro. In this case, it was like um, Rapid Pack Math, uh, which was FP16, basically half precision floating point operation, plus some other crap that uh, Sony thrown in. So basically the PS4 uh, Pro, was largely Polaris based, as most people know. But uh, Cerny and AMD, so Cerny, of course, from Sony, and AMD basically um, added in some features for the Vega architecture, which was going to launch later on. And of course, as I just mentioned, one of those key technologies was the FP16 support, and that allowed uh, checkerboard rendering. So I do believe it's very likely that this is true. Now, I'm not going to go super into the technical detail. Actually, uh, you don't know this, but. Well, I guess you will in a second, but I actually just recorded like an entirely different video and take while I was talking about like um, how uh, frame generation, a bunch of other stuff works, but there's a lot of information online and it'll go into that detail anyway, and I don't really feel that that's uh, the best way to describe or go into my thoughts in this video. If you want me to talk about that and how that may influence console gaming, uh, leave a comment, I guess, and maybe I'll put out something different and kind of go into a more technically nuanced discussion. But uh, if I start talking about that stuff, it's really going to be not just... I, I, I would say it's really not going to get to the point of the video. So the first thing is, is this going to be possible? Well, I do think that frame generation is probably going to be part of this. However... Um, frame generation doesn't necessarily provide a silver bullet. Um, so my thoughts are, first of all, that I do believe Michael is right. I do not believe this is misinformation. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think that this is untrue. Um, the next point is Sony have, as well as Microsoft, put out some pretty boastful claims in the past. Like I think it's the PS5, which features an 8K logo. Do correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, Microsoft were pushing 100. 20 frames a second capable at 4K as well. And of course, those claims are not untrue. You can run, you know, Xbox Series X games at 120 4K. It's just not all of them. Like, there are some games that, you know, like a small indie game, or less technically, say, uh, advanced, that can do that. 
which is 100% fine. So NXG is definitely not saying that every single game is going to be running at 120 hertz at 4K. And again, there will be upscaling involved here. I do, however, think that this is going to be a really interesting thing going forward. And for televisions, of course, now, if you already have a television that's like only 60 hertz, 4K capable, then obviously that's a very different discussion anyway. But if you have a VRR screen um, and variable rate refresh, of course, you can do some really interesting stuff. Like you can have a halfway house, if you will, between, uh, and Sony have done this with some of their first party games already. You can have a halfway house between 30 and uh, 60 frames a second. And you could do like 40 FPS and you can get some really nice results with that because obviously you're running, um, you know, at a faster frame rate than 30. So that's really good for input latency, but you're also at a much uh, lower frame rate than 60 hertz. So you also have the benefit of having much more time to render each frame of animation, which is ultimately what it comes down to. It's like frame, but uh, frame time budgets, if I can say the words. So I think that this is going to be Definitely, first of all, on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, NXG also states, and I believe, again, this is 100% true, that this is going to need to be implemented by a developer. So, for example, if you have a game, let's let's just pick on Tekken 7, because Tekken 7 is an older title, this is not going to suddenly run at 120 hertz on the PS5. Um, it just isn't going to do that, Resident Evil 7. If, for example, it's not given a patch, that's not going to work. On the other hand, if Capcom releases a patch for, uh, let's say, Resident Evil 4, that, of course, could support this in theory. And that's ultimately what it comes down to. Sony, of course, and uh, whatever, studio, will need to patch a game to enable those frame rates. Um, now, the other question is, will it mean that games like Grand Theft Auto 6 are going to run at those frames per second? Now, ultimately... There are a lot of different things you can take into consideration here. If you're running frame generation, that can help a lot with the output, but it might not necessarily help with like input latency. There are also going to be some games which don't necessarily lend themselves super well to frame generation or um, simply the CPU is just a limiting factor. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Grand Theft Auto 6. Um, now, obviously, Sony... Microsoft, we don't know how this game is going to run on the base system. I think it's very likely that the PS5 Pro is going to offer a very much enhanced experience over the base systems. And obviously, because we're not getting a PC port at launch, it also means that uh, the PS5 Pro, well, there's just no PC uh, counterpart anyway. So, yeah, you're kind of like, by default, the PS5 Pro is going to be the best way to play this game. I think um, not all games are definitely going to be running at 120 frames a second locked on the PS5 Pro, but it's certainly going to be a very cool machine indeed. I will also be very interested to see what exactly Sony are doing with their technologies because I have heard some mixed things as well regarding some advanced stuff in terms of uh, the ray tracing technologies and upscaling, utilizing that. However, I kind of have had some mixed information regarding whether that's for the PS5 Pro or not. I know that with the PlayStation 6, there is a bunch of technologies that Sony are going to be incorporating. They're going to be like, they're going to be really doubling down on AI and machine learning and a bunch of other stuff, as have Microsoft. Um, if we go back to the slides that Microsoft um, leaked with the FTC thing, they specifically talk about a bunch of information regarding, you know, ray tracing, um, machine learning, all this stuff. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Ultimately, the if you look at the specifications that are on screen right now, hopefully, of the PS5, now, uh, sorry, PS5 Pro. Now, obviously, these are not verified. I've heard some mixed things regarding the total number of workgroup processors. Some people swear to me it's 28 workgroup processors, which are enabled. Others tell me uh, 28 out of 30. Others swear to me it's 30 out of 32. I honestly do not know which is correct. Maybe... The specifications changed or something or another mid you know mid bring up of the console that's certainly possible and certainly has uh occurred in the past but ultimately roughly speaking these are probably going to be the specifications of the machine it's still based upon zen 2 albeit with higher clock frequencies so some games naturally are going to be more cpu limited so it's going to be very interesting to see how this console actually 
uh, just ends up performing. I will be very curious to see also what the marketing of this system and the sales are. Um, the PS5 base model, I think it was like 21 million rather than the 25 million um, sales forecast that was, so, you know, it wasn't a massive miss by uh, Sony, but it was a slight miss. So I will be curious to see how the PS5 Pro bolsters the sales of the of the system. I think it possibly be a lot more appealing as well to owners of, let's say, a PC, because obviously you're gonna get much closer visuals to like a higher end PC. I don't think the system is gonna be really expensive. I don't think we're gonna be in a, for a system that's like 700 bucks. Like, when you're talking about console hardware, ultimately speaking, there is kind of a, like a limit that you can push, which is quite interesting. It's, you know, folks will upgrade to like the latest phone, whether that's an iPhone or Galaxy or whatever, every two, three years, and they'll cough up like, you know, 800, 900,000 bucks to, you know, 1200 bucks or whatever. But for consoles, it's not quite like that. And obviously they really need to sell the consoles in high volume because they make a lot of money as well with the software uh, sales. So I do think that, uh, you know, this console is not gonna be that much more expensive than the base model launch price, uh, obviously depending on your region. Uh, maybe a bit more expensive, but it's gonna be very interesting to see what the marketing's like on this. I do think this information is true. I do think it's gonna offer some very tangible performance benefits over the, um, you know, not implementing it. I just want to kind of set expectations. I don't think all games are going to be running at like 4K native with like 120 hertz. Um, I just think it's going to be, again, on a case-by-case -case basis and what developers decide to do. And it's also not going to be like a one-size-fits-all. Um, as I said, it's going to also require the developers to, uh, well, basically support it as well. So I do feel that Sony are definitely going to be very... Uh, aggressive with their console push going forward it's also going to be very curious because obviously with the next generation xbox the rumor is i'm hearing and some others as well like 2026 ish uh, some reports are 27 but i'm hearing 26 but whatever you know 26 27 it seems to be launching prior to the playstation 6 i will be curious whether microsoft ends up doing a pro console or not i honestly do not know I think a handheld is extremely likely for Microsoft. I think that it's, I don't want to use the word guaranteed, but um, I would be shocked if they didn't do it. And I would not be surprised if Sony has a very aggressive uh, change in policy as well with its own handheld. It'd be very interesting to see. Speaking of Sony, one last story before I close out the video. And this is actually a visual. Um, so I'm sure you guys know that the PSVR 2 is a pretty cool piece of technology and it was received fairly well um, in terms of like its capabilities, like its overall visual fidelity and just ease of use and so on. And of course the problem, well, not really a problem, but you know, one limitation is that it has been limited of course to the PS5. Well, obviously the system is gonna support the PlayStation 5 Pro as well. And that's also one of the big selling points of the uh, PS5 Pro from what I've heard anyway, the improved visuals in PSVR 2. But Sony are stating that they will be basically getting this to work on the PC. It's gonna be fascinating to see how this is adopted and you know what software eventually ends up working with this with this he uh, headset, whether we get like a, I mean, I'm assuming, although I don't know for a fact, but I'm assuming that uh, we're gonna get a lot of ports, um, whether some of them are from well, let's just say bedroom developers who port games like Half-Life Alex, or whether it's officially supported or not. And it makes a lot of sense because ultimately it just means that Sony can, well, sell more hardware. And so I do think that this would be a really good case for um, Sony to kind of do this. Um, I think for someone like myself, I haven't got a PSVR 2. I really want to get one for, uh, for um, uh, Resident Evil and uh, uh, Gran, Gran Turismo 7. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it because I know that I wouldn't use it enough to make it worth it. Like, there are some really cool games on the system, but I'm like, do I really want to spend this money on just a couple of games? Like, maybe eventually I'll get it. But if it's coming on PC and it has a decent support system and I could play something like Half-Life Alex on it because I don't own um, a PC, uh, PC VR headset at the moment... Um, I used to have uh, one of the, I think it was like the, what was it, the Oculus 
DK2s, I think, the development kit 2s, um, which obviously had, let's just say, some issues. Um, so if this did support like a wide plethora of titles on the PC as well, I think that would be absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's going to be extremely interesting to see how Sony changes, or if it even changes its PC strategy. Obviously, there's a lot of, you know, let's just say opinions online. I honestly don't know one way or the other. I have a feeling Sony are just going to kind of do whatever the hell Sony wants. And it, honestly, it's a strategy that just seems to work for them. With that said, guys, I mean, that's just about enough of my waffling for this video. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.